So it was another garage sale day today, and I found a Gateway GT5618E desktop computer. And I picked this up for $5, and then along with that I bought uh, a monitor at the same garage sale for $10, which uh, does need some repair. Um, both these items aren't 100% complete. The side panel's missing on the desktop, and the monitor uh, needs some power supply work. It does power on, however. Um, I'll show you that now. Yeah, and then we have uh, auto detect, entering power save mode. But after about 10 minutes, the uh, backlight goes out. So uh, the power supply probably does need uh, some sort of repair. I went on to the Dell forums and it appears there's a, a capacitor and a 500k resistor, I want to say, that needs to be replaced. Uh, but that's not what this video is about. This video is focusing on this Gateway GT5618E. Now truthfully, uh, when I bought this, I wasn't expecting it to work um, because it was up on the shelf and it didn't look like it was in such a uh, great condition. But after I cleaned it, um, it does look a lot better. Uh, and I'll flip it over in a minute so you guys can see inside the case and all the components and uh, all that good stuff. But I wasn't expecting it to work, uh, especially since I bought it for $5. And I powered it on when I brought it home with this monitor, and I'll power it, powered it on again in just a minute. But I powered it on, and it booted into Windows Vista, a very, very sloppy version of Windows Vista with a whole ton of background programs running on it. So I'm going to wipe the drive and uh, put Windows 7 on it probably after this video, I want to say, um, because this computer definitely can one run Windows 7. And we have a AMD Athlon 64 dual core processor, a DVD burner, a 320 gigabyte SATA hard drive, two gigabytes of DDR2 memory. That's I can't believe they sold me this for five bucks. This is a great deal. And I'm debating if I should use this as my school computer, or give it to my sister and let her her use it as her con her school computer because right now she's using a e machine T1090 and it's it's a very old slow computer. I'm using a uh, Dell Dimension 4300, uh, much much better desktop PC, um, but this is better than that Dell Dimension as well. So I'm still deciding if I'm going to keep this and pass down my Dell Dimension or just give her this one um, because I have a gaming computer. Uh, that I don't use for school. That computer is her computer for everything. This also has uh, the NVIDIA GeForce 6150LE uh, integrated graphics along with a 15 and 1 memory card reader. And if you look around the computer, there's uh, Best Buy stickers all over it. I'm guessing this is... Uh... God, that sun's killing, killing me. I guess this was maybe sold at some kind of reduced price because of its condition. Or maybe they auctioned it off, or it was on clearance, uh, and someone bought it. So I just wanted to go ahead and give you guys a better look at the front of the case. Um, we have our Gateway logo uh, on this aluminum plate right here. Actually, it adds a very nice look to the PC. Um, AMD Athlon X64, or 64, dual core processor. Graphics by NVIDIA. Uh, Windows Vista, which, uh, once again, I'm wiping the hard drive and putting Windows 7 on it. Portable media drive bay. I'm not exactly sure what went in here. At one time, something was it. You know, maybe, maybe it's a hard drive bay. You could put like a 2.5 inch hard drive in here. Maybe I'm not sure what that's for. I'm not gonna. Don't don't quote me on that because <laughs> once again, I'm not sure. Um, we have a DVD RW and a CD RW drive, and then we have a expansion. Uh, expansion bay for a, another drive. We have the power button all the way at the top, USB 2.0 ports, and then uh, our 5-in-1 card reader. Now let's take a look at all the goodies inside. So we have our uh, AMD Athlon processor under this heatsink right here with a very nice Cooler Master fan. It, pretty much silent actually because I was running this and I couldn't hear either of the fans except when I uh, there's Diablo 2 installed on this computer, and then when I opened that up, the RPM on both span fans spun up because uh, the processor was under load. And this fan actually has a couple LEDs on it, so when you turn it on, the LEDs light up, and then it has its own uh, separate speed controller, which is really neat. This is a really nice fan. 
So I mean, everything in this computer is worth more than five dollars. So this this was definitely a good DR deal. Uh, two gigabytes of DDR2 RAM. Uh, 320 gigabyte Western Digital uh, Caviar hard drive. I'm not sure if you can see down there. I can't get the hard drive out right now. Uh, looks like you have to pull this whole bay out, which I'm too lazy to do. On the motherboard, we have two PCI slots. This one houses the Creative Labs sound card. And then right here, we have a 56K fax and phone modem. We have a full PCI Express uh, slot. And then we have a smaller PCI Express slot. I'm not sure if I'm going to add a dedicated graphics card in here yet or not. Uh, I have to run the integrated graphics through various tests first to see uh, how they perform. And if they don't perform too well, I'll probably throw a cheap PCI Express graphics card in here just to improve performance a little bit. Ah, uh, look, it's one of those awful Best Tech 300 watt power supplies that are notorious for taking out motherboards when they fail. So I'm definitely going to get this power supply replaced as soon as possible because uh, this is a pretty nice board and I really don't want this power supply to take it out. On the back of the computer we can see our power supply fan along with the AC input port. We have two PS2 ports, one for keyboard and one for the mouse, one serial port, one parallel port, and then one VGA port for our video out. We have four USB 2.0 ports on the back of the motherboard uh, along with one Ethernet port. And then we have our various audio, audio input and outputs along with uh, the audio inputs and outputs for the Creative Lab sound card and then our 56k phone uh, and fax modem. And this computer may possibly need a couple electrolytic capacitors replaced. As you can see right here, this one's bulging. Um, all the ones next to the PCI slots look okay. Um, once again, next to Northbridge, they look alright. Uh, one or two of the ones next to the CPU heatsink look like they're starting to bulge. I might have to take a look at those later on. And then everything else looks good. So. Uh, two or three capacitors are going to need to be replaced on this board sooner or later. So the next thing I'm going to do is take off this CPU heatsink and apply some new thermal paste to the uh, AMD Athlon 64 dual core processor because this thing is probably around seven years old and I'm sure the thermal or the old thermal paste has dried up by, by now. And also if you look closely the fan needs to be taken off and that heatsink needs to be completely cleaned because it is covered in dust. And of course for this I'm still going to be using my Antec Formula 7 uh, Nano Diamond Thermal Compound. That thermal paste looks absolutely awful. I doubt it's doing anything for the CPU right now so it definitely needs to be cleaned and then uh, properly re, uh, re or thermal paste needs to be properly reapplied. So here is our heatsink and AMD Athlon 64 processor, finally uh, rid of all that disgusting thermal grease which I still have all over my uh, hands because it wouldn't come off. Ugh, it was an absolute pain to get off. I went through like at least 20 sheets of paper towels and uh, maybe a fifth of a bottle of rubbing alcohol, uh, isopropyl rubbing alcohol to get all of this uh, old thermal paste off both the bottom of the heatsink and the top of the CPU. So now I'm going to go ahead and apply the Antec thermal paste. So I have that uh, heatsink and the CPU back in the computer. And we can go ahead and boot up Windows Vista. And I took out that uh, audio card on accident actually because apparently none of the cards have their uh, uh, bracket screws in. So I'm going to have to find a couple bracket screws in order to properly secure these cards. But it's a uh, Creative Lab Sound Blaster with a Extreme Fidelity Sound Processor. And I'll just uh, give you guys a better look at the card and then we can go ahead and uh, boot up this computer. You know what, there had to be some kind of uh, mounting bracket right here that broke off sometime in the computer's life because I tried to fit my mounting screws into these holes and uh, none of my mounting screws fit. 
And they're the uh, standard mounting screws I've been using on all of my PCs, and for some reason they just don't fit uh, in these particular mounting holes. So in, I think there's definitely something broken off here. You know, maybe some sort of tab that uh, flipped over, like in the uh, Dell Dimension, that flips over and holds the cards in place. So you know, something definitely happened there because I can't seem to find a way to secure these cards. So I have the computer hooked up to my Dell monitor right now via VGA and let's go ahead and power it up. In a minute I'm going to have to grab a uh, keyboard and mouse but I'm more, I'll worry about that when the time comes. So let's go ahead and hit that power button. There we go. We have our uh, gateway logo coming up and we should be booting into Vista. Oh, you know what? I gotta go grab a uh, keyboard real quick. Alright, so we got by the uh, startup screen. Or the uh, error screen, actually. That's what I meant. <laughs> and we are booting into Vista. And thankfully, there is no password to log on to this user account. You know what? This is taking a while, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop this and resume it when it boots up into Vista. So I had to uh, go ahead and boot up into safe mode because I couldn't get an image to come up on my uh, Dell monitor. So we're in uh, the system properties right now. And you can see right now, well as of now, it has a Windows Experience Index of uh, 1.0. Uh, for a processor, I already said that, running at 2.3 GHz, 2 GB of DDR2 RAM. This is the 32-bit edition of Windows Vista. Previous owner's name was Ryan. Uh, and then under that, there's the Windows Activation uh, serial number. Yeah, and there's so much crap on this computer, and I hate when people do this. I hate when people just throw shortcuts on their desktop. I like to have a uh, specific folder for shortcuts, so it's a bit neater. This is just kind of annoying to me. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe uh, the hard drive on this computer. I'll take off any drivers that I need uh, that uh, are in the system files, and then I'll either install Windows, se Windows 7, or I'm thinking I might install Ubuntu or Lubuntu. I'm not sure. I'm, I actually had a, a little debate with my sister about that because this is going to be her computer. So uh, I'm not sure about that yet, but I'm going to go ahead and wipe the hard drive using DBAN. And of course I have to run the, um, the diagnostics on the RAM and the hard drive to make sure those are functioning okay. Yeah, so uh, that's, that's my solution to the missing panel issue. I just took some aluminum foil and taped it to the side of the case, which took a lot longer than you would think because you had to size the pieces just right. It took about 30 minutes to get this just the way it is now. Um, and uh, in my opinion, uh, it's, it's not bad. It actually looks good. Uh, there's nothing caving in or anything when the computer's on. The fan's not sucking the uh, aluminum foil in or uh, anything like that. So this little fix works fine uh, for what I needed to do. So I'm going to go ahead and do one last boot with this computer. This time uh, I went ahead and installed Lubuntu 13.10 because I didn't feel like dealing with the driver's mess with Windows 7. Um, so I'll show you uh, some of the benchmarks, some of the system information on the Lubuntu system profiler. Uh, and then I'll show you a 100, no, no, 1080p video playing back on this computer, which is actually pretty impressive. So uh, that'll be it. Let's go ahead and power this PC up. You can see my uh, ghetto panel fix and the fan like showing out right there. Truthfully, I think this computer would be much better off running Ubuntu 
uh, but the Lubuntu disk was just sitting right in front of me and I didn't feel like burning a uh, ISO file of Ubuntu onto a CD or DVD. Plus I like LXDE better. Unity, Unity is kind of a pain. So let me go ahead and uh, punch in the login. Oh, you know what? That's my uh, that's my dimension keyboard. There we go. The wrong keyboard. And boot up time's not bad. Uh, um, in all, in all, besides me having to punch in the password to log in, it only took about forty five seconds. So let's try playing a HD video off a USB flash drive. I'll go ahead and start that now. Of course there's going to be no sound because I don't have speakers hooked up to this PC, but that audio card does work because I had headphones uh, hooked up to it and there was audio coming out. And there you go, look at that playback. Uh, not bad at all, pretty smooth. And if I maximize it to full screen, it's still smooth. There's not that much action going on in this uh, particular scene. I can go ahead and maybe f fast forward. There we go. Yeah, and I hear the uh, CPU fan spinning up right now. I'll just uh, let you uh, take a look at this for a couple seconds more and then we'll move on to the benchmark and system profiler. And I believe that's another best tech. No, 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 that's my Diablo tech power supply. Actually, that e-machine over there had a, I want to say, 150 watt best tech power supply in it. And I replaced that because I was scared it was going to take out the motherboard. That's actually my sister's old machine. So I replaced that with a uh, 320 watt Diablo tech power supply. Alright, so that's enough, that's enough of this. Let's go ahead and uh, head over to the system profiler. And of course, for the uh, system summary, we're getting, you know, the exact same summary that we got for the Vista summary, so I'm not going to go through that. It's a NVIDIA chipset, so all of the controllers and chips are coming up as being manufactured by NVIDIA. And if we scroll down farther, we can see that the operating system is picking up the Creative Lab CA0106 Sound Blaster. And then that, uh, commun that modem was a, well, Feel free to pronounce that, I'm not going to try. And then for our Ethernet controller, we have a Realtek Semiconductor, um, and then our model number. And let's go ahead and try out some benchmarks. I think the highest processor that this operating system has on record is a Intel Celeron running at 1.5 gigahertz, so this is definitely going to beat that. Yeah, right here. Uh, yeah, it's the uh, Intel Celeron M processor. At 1.5 gigahertz, that's the highest or the um, best performing processor they have on record. And then, of course, this machine we scored at 8.10. Lower numbers better in this case. And then, uh, apparently, our CPU clock it's reading at 1,000 megahertz, which in the Vista uh, information it said I believe 2.6 gigahertz or something. Maybe maybe I'm wrong, but I could have swore it said 2.6 gigahertz. I'll have to go back and check that. Maybe it was talking about combined. This this is talking about per, per core, I believe. And uh, for the CPU uh, crypto hash, we scored a 139.88. That's weird, it didn't give us any other CPUs to be uh, compared against. And there we go. Uh, this machine, yeah, so we're basically on all the, I think all these are processor tests. So on all the processor tests or benchmarks, uh, we're going to score the highest because once again, the highest or the best rated processor that this operating system or program has on record is a Intel Celeron. So yeah, the uh, AMD, uh, this AMD processor is definitely going to blow that out of the water. 
So that's about it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you have any critique for me, that would be great if you left it in the comment section as well, because I always appreciate critique from my viewers. And one last look around that PC before we go. It's actually a really cool effect, that blue fan. <laughs> oh, I might have to grab one of those myself for uh, my desktop. And there you go. I will see you next time.